Hi guys, welcome to Pencil College. This is our last video, okay, for chapter 11.2, where we'll be exploring example number 6. Okay, so this is a slightly more complicated example, okay, in which we will find all the angles between 0 and 2 pi, which satisfy this equation over here. Okay, so I would, you know, just for those, those of you who are still unsure about the conversion between pi and, pi and degree, okay, just highlight that pi radians is equals to 180 degrees. Okay, so multiplying both sides of this equation by 2, I'll get 2 pi radians equals to 360 degrees. Okay, so seeing four of these, of, uh, four of these uh, ASTC diagrams over here, I'm actually giving you a major hint. There are four answers to this equation. Okay, so how are we going to solve it? Okay, uh, just, watch, uh, just watch over here. So the first step will be to shift negative 1 to the right hand side of the equation. So I'll end up with 2 sine squared theta equals to 1. And dividing both sides by 2, I'll get sine squared theta equals to half. Okay. Next, I will move on to take the square root of this e of uh, both sides of the equation. So take note that when you take square root, there is two possible an there are two possible answers. Okay, one possible answer would be the sine of theta is equals to one over root two. The other possible answer would be the sine of theta equals to negative one over root two. Okay, so if you are not sure about um, this portion, okay. You might want to review the video on negative numbers. Okay, so anyway, let me just uh, talk about the two separate scenarios, okay, and as well as uh, highlight it on the ASTC diagram. Okay, so if sine theta is equal to 1 over root 2, since the sine of theta is a positive uh, value, okay, we will either be in the A quadrant or in the sine quadrant. Okay, so let us work on the first case. Okay, the first scenario. Okay, so if we are in the A quadrant, theta will be measured this way. Okay, so this is my theta and this is my right angle, triangle over here. Okay, so in the all quadrant or the A quadrant, alpha is the same as my theta. Okay, so over here, this red angle is my alpha, which is the same as theta. Okay, the next scenario whereby theta is in the sine quadrant, I'll measure from here. So over here, this is my theta. Okay, so over here. And then from here, I will identify my basic angle alpha. So alpha is over here. Just want to highlight that alpha is always measured with respect to the horizontal axis. Okay, so let us work on these two scenarios first. Okay, so to find basic angle alpha, we just take sine inverse of 1 over root 2, okay, and then you can press this in your calculator, okay, and remember, since we're in radian mode now, let us try to give alpha in terms of pi, okay, so just ensure that your calculator is in radian mode, okay, radian mode, okay, before you press this into your calculator. So if you press it in radian mode, alpha is just pi over 4. Okay, so from here, from here, let us identify the two possible values of theta. So theta, as discussed earlier, it can be just alpha, or it can be pi over 2, okay, sorry, wrong, pi, okay, minus alpha, pi minus alpha. Why is it pi minus alpha? Look at this diagram over here, okay? Since 180 degrees is equals to pi and theta is this angle over here, okay, theta will just be pi minus alpha. Okay, so 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 much for the first scenario. Okay, let us let us move on. Okay, to explore the second scenario. So this is scenario number two. Okay, where where sine theta is a negative one over root two. Okay, so recall that for sine theta to be negative we have to be either in the tangent quadrant okay tangent quadrant or in the cosine quadrant okay so this explains the other scenario over here okay so in the tangent quadrant theta will be measured like that okay all the way into the tangent quadrant and in this case our alpha is just over here okay so this blue angle is alpha Okay, 
So this is my theta, and this is my alpha. Now how about the cosine quadrant? So to measure theta into the cosine quadrant, it will go all the way here. Okay, and this is my theta. Okay, so in this scenario over here, my alpha would just be this angle. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the solving portion. So recall that to find alpha, we will take the sine inverse, okay, of these values over here, of this number over here, okay, without the negative sign. Say again, without the negative sign. So this will just be sine inverse 1 over root 2, which happens to be the same as the alpha that we calculated earlier. So I'm just going to use pi over 4, okay. And then, in this scenario, theta will be pi, okay, plus alpha, or 2 pi minus alpha. 2 pi minus alpha. Okay, so let me just do a let, let me just uh, do a summary on all the possible values of theta. So theta can be alpha, which is just pi over 4, okay, or pi minus alpha, which is pi minus pi over 4, or pi plus alpha, or 2 pi minus alpha. Okay, and if you solve all of this, you just get pi over 4. 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and lastly, 7 pi over 4. Okay, so these are the four values for theta. Okay, so this brings us to the end of uh, chapter 11.2. Okay, and uh, before we end this video, let me just do a summary for the whole of chapter 11.2. Okay, it's a really long chapter, but let me just highlight the important things to take note of. Okay, so the first key thing that we learn is the trigger ratios of acute angles. Okay, which is your cosine theta, sine theta, and tangent theta. Okay, and this can be summarized in your toa kaso. Okay, a toa kaso. Okay, and this only works for right angle triangles. Okay, the next thing we learn are the trigger ratios of special angles. Okay, which as you can see in this table over here. Okay. Moving on, we learn about the trigger ratios of complementary angles. Okay, which are summarized over here. And then we also learn about the complement, sorry, the trigger ratios of supplementary angles. Okay. And uh, we also learn about the trigger ratios of negative angles over here. Okay. And before we end off the chapter, we also learn about the ASTC diagram and how to make use of it, as you have seen in the examples earlier on. Okay. Last but not least, we also learn about the ASTC diagram okay and uh, before I end off I'll just like to leave you guys with this table over here it sort of summarizes all the important degrees or sorry important angles okay that you need to know but uh, there's no need to really memorize this table it's just supposed to be helpful when you solve your trigger ratio problems okay and also let me just leave you with some practice questions you can try it during your own free time Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos, please log on to pencilcollege.com. See ya!